Hey folks, Quilly Teen here, and welcome to Board Game Night, Small World Edition. I just finished playing a session of Small World with a handful of YouTubers, uh, Enter Elysium, Marumba, Briarstone, and Knorr, and in those videos we jumped directly into the game, but I wanted to make a video beforehand sort of explaining what Small World is, what makes it so awesome, and how you play. Uh, Small World is a, a board game that I own physically in real life that I enjoy playing with friends a lot. It's also available on PC, uh, sold through Steam. It might be available directly through the Days of Wonder website as well. Um, and it also has a, like, like portable tablet versions. And this is a game that works really, really well in all those formats. I mean, it's basically a game where you're, you're moving tokens around, so it works pretty well in a sort of tablet-y kind of interface. Um, I like to describe this game as, uh, you know, the board game Risk? Well, it's like Risk, but not stupid, based on stupid die rolls, and also not boring. So, this is a fun, exciting game that um, minimizes luck, although there's just enough of a luck element to make it uh, really interesting. Um, it, is, it is really a, a hoot to play, so um, we're going to go ahead and dive right in um, to this. So, um, main menu. Hit, click play. So there's a few different modes that you can play. There's full online support through the uh, the Days of Wonder sort of, um, I don't know, multiplayer website. They've got, uh, Days of Wonder is a company that makes a lot of board games, and they've come up with a pretty good system to play their stuff online. You can go into the online arena. It's even rated if you want to, you know, get some, uh, some MMR and uh, prove your skills, you can do that. It's also really, really well suited to sort of play by email style play, where you take your turn and then you hit done, and then someone else somewhere gets a notification that, hey, there's a turn ready for you to play. Uh, you can invite your buddies, which uh, really starts that sort of play-by-email mode. In the online arena, it is more real-time, and if someone drops, an AI takes over at that point. And I gotta say, the AI is pretty competent at this game. It does an okay job. Um, it's got this pass-and-play mode, which is like a hot seat kind of thing, and... Uh, you know, it shows here people passing the actual tablet around. That's the thing. I think it would work really, really well for that kind of situation. The local game is for LAN. Like, that's the thing. It supports kind of everything that it should support, which is pretty nice. Your list of games in progress, and then uh, your solo gameplay over here, which we're going to play against bots. Uh, it's going to tell me that, yeah, no, I don't want to resume. Well, we're going to go ahead and start a new one. Okay. So, um, Small World is a game of with up to five players if you want. What's really interesting is, um, depending on how many players you play with, the map will be a different size. It is a fixed map. Again, we're talking about an actual board game here. Um, but in the physical box, there are two like boards, game boards, and they're double-sided. So you have a two-player uh, two player side, three-player side. Then on the other sheet, the four-player side, five-player side. Uh, so the board is always sort of balanced for exactly the number of players you're with. I'll go ahead and just start a two-player game. It'll keep it tight. There are three expansions available for Small World 2 online. Um, there's also a fourth ex expansion for Kickstarter backers. Um, and what's nice is the, uh, the host of the game, it uses that person's expansions. So if I'm hosting the game and I've got all the expansions turned on, then anyone who joins my game... They, they don't need the expansions. They can still join my game, and everything will be there. The game, the, the expansions simply add extra race and power combos, and we'll talk about what those do once we get in the game. I'm actually going to turn off the expansions for this demo, just because it'll keep things a little bit more streamlined. In the multiplayer game that you'll be able to watch, I think the first game we have all the expansions turned off, and then the second one we have them all turned on, including the Kickstarter backer version, so you'll get to get a good sense of how it goes. All right, so let's jump right in. So, um, there we go. Let's go to show map here. This is what the game board looks like. This is the two-player version, so it's quite small with not a whole lot of regions, but it's always going to be relatively small. The name of the game is Small World, and it's about having a very tight, confined region that you are really gonna have to brawl over. And one of the interesting mechanics is when you play, you have to choose one of these race combos to be represented as um, to play in the game. And, um, but they tend to run out of steam. The game is played over a number of turns in the two player mode. You can see here it's over 10 turns. When you are playing in the five player mode, it's eight turns. So there's a bit of a scaling there. Um, your race cannot last until the end of that, um, until the end of the game like that. They will run out of steam, at which point you go into decline with that race and end up picking a new race combo. Your race that's in decline continues to earn you points, but it's just no longer active. So, um, here you can see the race combos that were dealt out at the beginning of the game. You can see the race itself is this part here, and then there's a power over here. And these are randomized. So today we've got Dragon Master Giants, um, Wealthy Wizards, Heroic Dwarves, Commando Humans, Flying Tritons, 
and Forest Ratman. But the next time we play, it'll be a complete different setup. Now, once I pick one of these, another race combo will be dealt. Order matters. This is the, the first position all the way down to the sixth position. So if I pick something, let's say I pick the Wealthy Wizards, I will take them. Everything else gets moved up, and a new race gets dealt at the bottom. Um, some of them will be more powerful than others, but what's, there's an interesting mechanic to sort of balance that out. For example... <clears throat> The Commando Humans might be might be really, really powerful, for an example. But if I take that, I have to take three of my victory coins and spread them out along everything up top. Here's what I'm talking about. The way to win the game is to end up with the most number of victory points, or coins. Um, you start off with five. If I take the race in the first position, it's free. I just take it, and that's fine. But the further down I go, every race I skipped, I have to put one of my victory points on every race that I've skipped like that, which means, A... For me to go right to the Forest Ratman, for example, um, it would cost me five victory points. But not only that, but the next player around would now be incentivized. If the uh, the Wealthy Wizards, if the Wealthy Wizards are a terrible combo, they're not bad. They're fine. Whatever. But let's let's pretend the Wealthy Wizards are terrible. Well, if everyone keeps skipping them, every time you skip them, a coin will be added to this pile. So. Uh, eventually, one player is going to be like, well, the Wealthy Wizards may not be a great combo, but there's like an extra five coins sitting on top of them, so if I take them, even if I don't do that much with them, I'm already ahead. And it's not to say the Wealthy Wizards is a bad combo, in fact, they're fine. What's interesting is Wealthy does not give you any special power, it's just if you pick a Wealthy race, you just instantly get seven coins. So that's actually a good example almost of that mechanic. One of the expansions adds a, um, adds a power called Cursed. The Cursed power does nothing. It has no power, and it doesn't contribute any extra army dudes. What do I mean by that? If I were to pick the uh, Dragon Master Giants, I would start off with 11 Giants. Six from the base Giants, and five from the power. If I start with the Wealthy Wizards, I would only start with nine um, Wizards to deploy, and so on. The Heroic Dwarves, I would only get eight of them, which is particularly poor. The reason you only start with the base of three Dwarves over here is because their power stays active even when the Dwarves are in decline, which is a pretty unusual thing, and so on. The Cursed Ones start with zero power over here, so you just get whatever's your base. So Cursed Dwarves, for example, you would start with only three and there's no power on Cursed. The difference is, so obviously you're gonna to wanna to skip that, but the problem is every time you skip the Cursed race, you actually have to put three coins on that one. So it's much more expensive to skip, plus eventually there's gonna be like 15 coins on there and someone will just be like, fine, I'll take the Cursed Dwarves. So um, I'm gonna start off for the sake of argument. I'm not gonna say that this is the best combo by far. Uh, I will start with the Heroic Dwarves uh, because it'll let me showcase an interesting little um, um, mechanic here. So I'm going to pick with I'm going to pick them. So I have to put a victory point on the Dragon Master Giants and another one on the Wealthy Wizards. Boop, like that. Now I've got to conquer some regions. So I have eight Dwarven units to put down. I can start conquering any unit that's on the edge of the map. So I could start say here or here or here. I can also start here and here because um, the coast means that this this here counts as an, ed, uh, an edge unit, even though it's not technically touching the side of the board, for example. So I can pick anywhere along the edge, um, and I can start deploying my units. Now, I have eight dwarves, but it actually costs me more than one to take over territory. And the reason is this. It costs you two units to take a, a province, an empty province, an empty region. But for every thing that's in the region, so example, here's a lost tribe, an ancient race that's quasi-extinct, for every thing in a province, it costs an extra army unit, so it would take me three to take over this territory. This mountain also, because of the mountain token, counts as one extra as well. Now, the Lost Tribes, if I come in here, I will kill the Lost Tribes and remove it from the board. The mountains stay forever. Um, so we have to pick and choose where we're going to go. Now, as the dwarves, my special power over here is that each mine region, which is this... Uh, pick and shovel icon, gets me one extra victory point at the end of my turn. So at the end of your turn, for every province or region that you control, you earn one victory point. If I control one with the mine icon, I get a bonus point. So I'm going to want to prioritize that just because I'm a dwarf. The heroic side is interesting. At the end of my turn, I can deploy these two hero tokens on a couple of different regions. Those regions cannot be attacked. They are immune, which is pretty awesome. So I think what I'm going to do is actually come in in the north over here. Because what I can do is I can go and grab um, this mine here with three tokens. That'll leave me with five. I could go here and here, which I think I'm going to do. Uh, I do it with five tokens. I could put three here and then two here. Either way, I'd end up with two mines. But what I can do is if I could go this way and then this way, 
I'm left with one token. Now, I told you that if I want to take any of these other regions, say here, here, or here, because they have a thingy in them, it will cost me one extra. Uh, it'll cost me a total of three soldiers to take over. But your last conquest of the turn, if you don't quite have enough people, you get to roll a die. So it's a six-sided die, but three of the faces are blank, and then there's a, a one, a two, and a three outcome. So if I want to, say, take over this region here, I need a two or better on the die, which, you know, it's a, basically a two out of six, because I could roll a two or a six over here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and give it a try. I rolled a three, which is amazing. As you'll see in the videos, it's actually really, really hard to, uh, to have that work out, but it did work out here. I'm now in the redeploy phase, so the units that I uh, use to take over the territory, I don't have to leave them where they are. What I can do is I can move them around. I have to leave one person on the province that I took over, so I always have to leave at least one. But other than that, I can sort of shuffle around and, and work out my defenses. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to protect my mines. I'm going to leave two people on the uh, mountains over here. The mountains do add extra defenses, so it would take two for the province, one for the mountain, two extra here. It would take a total of five army to take this over, which is pretty unappealing for people, so it's going to be pretty safe, um, and then it will take uh, four, uh, it will actually take six over here to take this over. However, the AI might grab the Dragon Master Giants, um, which would, the, the ability of the dragon is, um, you use one token plus your dragon token, and that's enough to take over any region. So it doesn't matter how many people are defending there, the dragon just eats them all, and the place with the dragon can't be counterattacked. Oh, I forgot it was heroic! Hold on, hold on. I was almost making a mistake here. We're going to do... Right, we're going to do like this. We'll we'll keep our bigger armies on these provinces, and then I'll deploy my heroic tokens there and there, which makes those regions immune to being attacked. Very useful, and that protects my mines. So I'm going to hit done. This turn, I'm going to earn six points. One for each province I occupy, and then a bonus point for each of the mines, because I am dwarves. There we go. Six point turn is not, is not a huge turn, but uh, the starting turn is usually a little bit lower. So it looks like the AI is going to go for the wealthy wizards. So um, the wizards, being wealthy, he started with seven oh, coins no. to start off with. And in addition to that, he gets a bonus victory coin for every magic region he uh, controls, which are these um, sort of diamonds here. You can see he earned 11, but that counts the seven from picking the wizard. So that's a one shot deal. Now, I have to decide what I'm going to do here. Um, I'm not close to another mine. There's one down here and one down here. With four dwarves, I could... Uh, I would use three here, and then we need a really good roll to take another mine over here. I think I'm going to immediately go into decline with my race. Because I don't really have a lot of juice left to take over my more territory, I will go into decline. Um, when I go into decline, I'm going to be flipping over all my other all my existing tokens, and that's it. I'm just going to leave one token on every province. I'm going to flip them over to the gray side to show that they're inactive, and that will be the end of my turn. I can't do anything. If you want to decline, you have to, you do nothing else this turn. Um, I still earn prank points for every province that my people occupy, and the dwarves are very special in that their power continues to work when they're in decline. Every Most power, by default, your powers do not continue to work in decline, but the dwarves do, so I'll actually earn six points this turn, even when going to decline. And as long as no one comes over and takes over these mines, they will keep making some serious bank for me, which is really good. Wouldn't surprise me if the AI might decide to attack me over here next turn, although it might prioritize going after the magical terrain. So I'm going to hit the decline button, and flip them all over, and that's my turn. My entire turn is just saying I go into decline. There are some special powers that allow you to attack and then go into decline on the same turn, which is really good. I think that's called stout, and that is really potent. Okay, so they are attacking me here, clearing out one of my mines, which sucks, and taking over an extra province, uh, which hurts my points quite a bit. He's going to earn seven points this turn. So the AI is definitely ahead. But now I get to pick a new race. And it's going to be real. Oh my god, that is... um. It's either going to be the Dragon Master Giants or the Commando Humans. Um, the Commandos are really good because while they only have, they start with four dudes as their power instead of five, which most of them do, I need one less person for taking over every region, which means I save a lot of tokens. Um, the Humans are decent, decent number, and you get more money from planes. But the Dragon Master Giants, I'd start with 11, and I would have one Dragon token to play with, which is really good. And Giants, if you occupy a mountain, all terrain adjacent to the mountain takes one less token than normal to take over so if i were to take the dragon master giants also note i would get two coins from that and i wouldn't have to spend an extra coin which i would for the humans 
So if I take the Dragon Master Giant, what I could do is something like um, use the dragon to cheaply grab, say, this terrain, then make a move into the mountains here, and then attack adjacent to the mountains as much as possible. Um, I'm trying to decide which would be better. You know what? Actually, I'm going to make sure to clear out this guy because the idea is I want to make sure that he can't attack my other mine over here. So I will take the Dragon Master Giants for sure. And so I have 11 dudes. I will, I probably won't take advantage of the giant bonus that often or that much. Um, I could, if I wanted to, I could come in the south over here, take over a lot of territory, therefore maximizing the number of points I earn. But it's also important to deny other people from points. So the dragon plus one giant, you always need one person to lead the dragon, ride the dragon into battle, is going to go over here. So normally this would take me five people, but instead it's going to take me one person plus my dragon token. I take over that. What's notable here, as you can see, this was a stack of three wizards. I took over this territory. My opponent got two of his wizard tokens back. Whenever a region is taken, only one token is discarded. One token is trashed. Doesn't matter how many are on the tile, one gets trashed, and then everything else goes back to the person's pool. Um, so taking out a three stack doesn't actually hurt my opponent uh, in any special way, for example. And at the end of my turn, he'll actually be able to uh, redeploy his tokens. Even in a five player game, um, as soon as my turn is over, anyone who uh, lost some territory and had some tokens could redeploy. The elves, which haven't come up yet, are kind of interesting in that elves are never killed when uh, a region is taken over. I guess they just surrender and run away right away. So I'm going to have to use a few extra resources here to take that, and then I'm going to go and take the mountain over here. So I am denying a lot of territory from the wizards, but now I've also got a mountain, which is really good. And normally this would take me three tokens to grab that, but it will only cost me the two. So I don't even need to do a die roll. So I will go ahead and do that one. All right, now I get to redeploy. Um, I don't have to worry about defending this site because I've got a dragon on it. Plus, he can't really attack. In fact, he can't really attack me here either. The only way he can attack is land adjacent to this wizard. So what I think I'm going to do is stack up some defenses here. So he can't really take me out there. Um, and I'll leave some extra guys on the mountain just in case. I suspect the AI will probably go into decline here. That'll be the end of my turn. I'll score some points, including my dwarves, which I don't get to control, but they still earn me points. So seven points. I think I'm still behind. I can check my points total whenever I want, but you cannot check the point total of your opponents. Oh, he's still playing. He took over one territory over here. Failed to do a roll to take over this territory. Only earned three points. Nice. Now, you can, you know, write down on a piece of paper how many points everyone's got, and that'll tell you who to attack. But, uh, you know, a lot of it... Sometimes, it, in practice, we don't tend to, to do that, and uh, there's a lot of trying to guess what kind of power people have, and then also a lot of uh, diplomacy of trying to convince people that you're not strong. Okay, so... Um, I'm curious about something. Yeah, see, the magic regions for the wizards, they do not continue to get the bonus point from that when they go into decline, unlike the dwarven ability, which is cool. I think I might just wipe these guys off the uh, the map completely. Um, trying to figure out, like... I know, I want to do this. That's it for sure. Clear this area out, make sure he can't get those points. If I wipe him out completely, he's actually got the option of coming back on the map wherever he wants. This way, he can only take a territory adjacent to here, so I can sort of control what's going on. Um, I think what I'm going to do is kind of backfill this area here for maximum points. There, and we'll take a die roll. I don't need a die roll here. I would need one here. I'm going to leave him where he is. I'm going to go here, just try to grab that magic region. Uh, and then we redeploy, so I can redeploy from the front here. Um, and here, I don't have any extra units here, here. Um, I like the idea of defending the mountain, although I'm, I'm probably going to go into decline with the, mountain, the, the giants next turn, just because there's not much left for them to do. So yeah, I'll hit done. We'll see what the AI decides to do. We'll earn a fair deal of points. And I guess I can play out this game. I wasn't planning on doing that, but we can go through the, the entire thing. 11 points! Good turn. Yeah, he just goes into decline. So he earns his one coin, and that is it. You will be able to pick a, a race next turn, and he might pick the uh, Commando Humans, which would be pretty potent. So now I have to decide, do I want to take over more territory? And I could take over two extra provinces right now. Um, or I could go into decline. So I could take over two extra provinces, which would earn me two more points this turn. 
but then I would really be overextended, and I'm probably going to lose a lot of my territory relatively soon. If I go into decline now, I will earn two fewer points, but then I'll be able to pick a new race. Ah, there is, sorry, one thing I forgot about. You can only have one race in decline at any given time, so if I decline my giants, I will lose my um, my dwarves, and these dwarves are actually earning me three points right now, because the extra point from the mine. So you know what? I will go ahead and just take more territory. Uh, I'll use my uh, my dragon first. Doesn't really matter where I start, but grabbing the hill makes the most sense. Because normally this would take three dudes. Here it'll only take one plus the dragon. So I'll do that, and then I've got the uh, the mountain, so I've got adjacency bonus. So I could um, I could use both guys here. What I'm going to do is use one guy here, and then try to do a die roll for this spot. And it worked. So I actually earned by not the uh, declining my. Um, my giants, I earned three extra points here, plus the three from my dwarves, so an excellent turn. I have nothing to de de redeploy. I am completely spread thin, so no real defenses, so I suspect the commando humans are just going to tear through my territory, but this will be a pretty good turn. I'm actually hoping they decide to land on, say, the dwarves, clear that out, because then if I go into decline, uh, I won't worry about losing dwarves, but 14 points is a huge turn. All right. Yeah, they're going commando humans. I knew it. And... Okay, he... Yes. No, no, go this way. Take out the dwarves. See, they're playing smart. Focusing on the active race. Failed his die roll, at least. But I have no extra giants. Because I had no, no multi-stacks of anything. So we get seven points. I still have my uh, uh, my dragon, but I have no one to lead him. So I, I have no choice. I have to go into uh, to decline. Which means losing the dwarves. But I need a new race. I've got no choice. So I'll only earn, actually, six points is, or seven points is actually fine. I can't complain about that uh, one bit. Hmm. Oh, and he did a failed roll over there. Good stuff. I still have a lot of giants over here, which is nice. So what I'm going to want to do with whatever race I pick next is I'm going to want to avoid the territory of my giants because I want to keep them around and keep making points. I'm tempted to grab those flying tritons. Um, they conquer tritons conquer all coastal regions at a cost of one less token. Flying means you can go anywhere and you don't have to worry about adjacency. I think these all count as coastal regions because of the lake as well. So I kind of like the idea of flying because I can just sort of drop here and here for cheaper, even here for cheaper. Now, ideally, what I want to do is kick the humans off the farmlands because they get an extra coin from there. So, I think that's the right way to do it. Uh, the forest ratmen are also good. You get bonus coins from being in the forest. The ratmen have no power. You just get a lot of them. Um, underworld halflings. No, we're going to go with the flying tritons. Kind of a little weird. I guess we're some sort of flying fish. Um, that works. We've got 11 tokens to start off with. So, I'm definitely going to want to kick them out of this land here. We get one cheaper because it's coastal. Plus, that denies them a farmland, which is really good. Um, and then... I, because I'm flying, I can just drop directly on these guys. The question is, is that worth it? Uh, if I go here, that's two, leave me with six. Uh, three more, which leave me three. And then I could try to attack here with a die roll. No, I think it makes more sense to take the, the guaranteed here. Um, and then, either way, I can take either one of these provinces and then be left with a die roll. I will attack here and then do a die roll for this spot. Oh my god, I've like perfect die rolls this game. Unbelievably good luck. Now we get to redeploy. I'm going to go ahead and uh, maybe do something like this. I definitely want to keep a heavier stack on the farms themselves. Tell you what, maybe we'll even do this. Sure, it makes it easy to kill this spot, but I really want to deny them the farmland. That's overkill. You know what? Let's do it that way because I can re attack here a little bit easier. Okay, I like this. Done. Give me my points. What added to the board? Oh, the stout sorcerers. The stout is cool because you can attack and then decline. At the end of a conquest instead of the beginning. So you don't lose a turn with the stout sorcerers. And the stout the sorcerers also have a really cool ability. Ah, denied. To um, mind control other other units. Pretty good combo over here. Much better earlier in the game because the stout, you know, you encourages you to go into decline. Also, it's very expensive. I have seven tritons left over. I see no reason to stop the conquest, especially right now. I'm going to go and kick these guys out of this region, which will also cost them one of their tokens. It's slightly cheaper. I don't think I'll go over here. Um, I think what I'll do is grab some of the cheap, cheap coastal territory. Um, something like that, like that, and then we'll do a die roll over here. Yeah, no matter what, I'll still need a die roll, so. 
Come on, baby. Oh my god, every single die roll has been good this game. Uh, a redeploy, I will go ahead and do that on top of the uh, the farmland. But, oh, this one here, because they can't actually attack me back here. Um, I don't need to defend here. So, you know what, we'll do something like that. That's hopefully enough defenses on this farmland. Yeah, he doesn't have enough tokens, he'll have to go into decline. I think I've got this game. Making buku money right now. Huge turns. Bam. Alright. The AI actually does pretty good in this game, but it's not quite the same. Do do do. He only gets two points going into decline. He will get to pick a new race, but um I I don't want to go into decline yet because my giants are still only earning me five per turn. So we're not gonna do that. We're gonna go ahead and um Either way, I'm going to get one territory for free and then have to make a roll. Um, or I could just just go here. So I would only get... Okay. So I get one province guaranteed no matter what. And then I could roll to see if I can get a second one. Because I don't have enough people to take over a second one. So there's a chance I might get two. Or I can take this province guaranteed. There's no chance I'll get another one, but it will deny them one point. And I like that. So we're going to do that. A redeploy. I wonder what he's going to come in with. He might come in with a forest ratman. So I will just try to make this forest a little bit more expensive. He could also go with the Underworld Halflings, which is actually a pretty good combo. Uh, we'll hit done. So this was my ninth out of 10th turn. My next turn will be my final turn. There's no point in doing a decline on the final turn uh, because I will never get a chance to pick another race. 14. So it's important to keep track of the turn timer because you can time some stuff. He's going to go for the Merchant Orcs. Okay. Orcs are cool. They, oh my god, the AI's gotten a terrible luck on the die roll as well. Orcs get an extra coin for every territory they take over that had a unit in it. So for every person they kill, they get an extra point. And merchants get an extra point for every region. Oops, why is it showing me that? Show me the merchant orcs, which is really good. However, the merchant card only gives two units. So you get way fewer units, but you get some serious money with the merchant uh, whatevers. Um, the Merchant Orcs, I don't, I'm not convinced is a great combo because by having fewer dudes over here, you don't get to take advantage of the Orc bonus to, to conquer territory. Uh, with the Orcs, you really want something with like a big number of units and ideally something that helps you take over, uh, land easier. Like Commando Orcs is one of the sickest, um, because again, we had Commandos at some point, didn't we? Pretty sure we did. The Commando ones were, um, minus one cost. Uh, oh yeah, I had the, the Commando Giants, didn't I? Nope, Dragon Master. It was minus one cost for every takeover. So that's really good. Berserker's really good. You get to roll some extra dice. The Dragon Master orcs are also pretty strong. Anyway, uh, it is my turn. Again, it's my final turn. There's no reason at all to go into decline because that would just prevent me from being able to conquer new territory. Uh, the AI does get another turn. It would be nice to go and maybe kill some orcs, but it doesn't seem to be a possibility. I could go here with a die roll. I think the thing to make sense, though, is just to get the, uh, the free guaranteed points, which I'm going to go ahead and do there. And then I'll put some extra units here to try to defend against the orcs. Hit done. Get my last set of points, and the AI will get to go one more time. In a five-player game, there's a lot more drama. Back and forth, there's a lot more races going on, and uh, diplomacy becomes incredibly important because you're trying to convince people not to attack you. Again, the AI fails on the roll, while I made it all my rolls, so that's one of the reasons this is going to be such a one-sided stomp. I said at the start that luck does not play a huge factor in the game, and that is true. There is the die roll, but it's not usually a dominant thing. In fact, one of the more important things tends to be uh, just the races that get generated and the order of the players. So that is a blowout. Uh, yes. Um, earning, like, <laughs> over 100 points is a massive, massive, massive game. Um, something like between 70 and 90 points for a winner is probably a lot more uh, frequent. So this, I mean, right from the start, this is a completely one-sided game. Um, mostly due to the die rolls, perhaps, but also being better than the eye. I love the, uh, the stats over here. Shows you all the races you played, how much each one earned. So you can see my Dragon Master Giants earned 53 coins for me, which is pretty good. The Flying Tritons did all right, too. In fact, the Heroic Dwarves didn't actually earn that many for me. Maybe I shouldn't have started with them. I don't know. Uh, but that's the way it goes. Wealthy Wizards earned 30 coins. That's including the 7 from being wealthy. 21 from the Humans and 11 from the Orcs. I like how it also shows you how much time you spent playing each race as well, which is quite cool. The most number of uh, coins I earned per turn and the least from these guys. Um, 
but yeah, I had some turns where I earned like 13 coins, but it wasn't from any one particular race. And your preferred victim, which is really, uh, once we get, watch the multiplayer games, the five person multiplayer games, uh, that stuff is really fun to watch. So anyway, there you go. Uh, I do definitely recommend Small World in general. I mean, the physical version is is stupendously good. And this online version works pretty well. Some of the, uh, the game, like ma uh, matching, function to, uh, to try to get these uh, these games going was a little bit awkward in a sense. Um, the UI is a little bit weird, like this is the, the players, I, I found like picking the number of players is a little counterintuitive and by default the first player always goes first but you want to randomize that usually. Um, the timers do work pretty well here. This is how much total time the player has um, through the entire game, like a chess clock. So basically you have a total of 15 minutes to play across all your turns. So uh, it's not 15 minutes per turn, you can also set a, a custom timer. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, the multi-session is the play by email. You can see here 30 minutes or 15 days, 15 days to take your turn, for example. So a good sort of play by email thing. The single session is the, everyone plays live. If someone drops, then uh, a bot takes over, for example. Um, so you got that. Then you got your invite buddies mode. There you go. There's the buddy list and so on and so forth. So, um, yeah, great, great actual physical board game. The digital version is pretty good. I actually, um, might look into the, um, the tablet version I think they've got an Android one. I'm pretty sure they've got Android and uh, an iPad. And uh, honestly, I think it's a, it's a great little format for it. Um, there you go. So uh, stay tuned. Tomorrow, the first of the multiplayer videos will go up. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.